Uh, this is uh, Spiritual Workout with uh, Kevin and Bain, uh, Kevin and Janet Bain Healing Ministry. You can find us on the World Wide Web at uh, www.miracle-now.com. And of course, our home phone number is 417 273 2036. The longer I speak in this message, the better the message gets. So stay with us till the end, will you? Thank you. Bye. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Kevin Bean. My wife Janet's operating the camera. We are the Healing Ministry. <clears throat> We're glad you joined us today. Uh, this will be the sermon for May the uh, 12th, 2013. Today we're talking about having a spiritual workout, along with a physical workout. <clears throat> so we're going to be in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 30. So I want you to go ahead and find that, and we're going to invite God in this morning. Father Jesus, we come to you this morning so humbled, so thankful to be here, so thankful that you've chosen us to bring your word, Father God. And we're not going to waste your time today. We're going to invite you in, as usual. We want you to be the head, and we will lead. We just ask you to use us, Father God. We ask you to take over this message, so that the people will be able to hear you speak through this vessel. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, what prompted this message? Well, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about why we're doing this today. And then we're going to get right into the scriptures. Uh, I felt today, and not, not just today, uh, a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I felt that God was leading me to get a little bit of physical exercise. Of course, I get exercise, uh, you know, just walking my dog. You know, we, we made it a habit to, to go off and into the woods and, and we walk and we walk a mile, two miles, three miles, whatever we decide we're going to do that day and we have a good time and that's been the extent of my exercise. Of course you know if you've been listening to us that we used to live on a farm and when you live on a farm there's a lot of work to do and you don't have time to work out because you're working out all day. Well since we don't live on the farm anymore we live in this one bedroom apartment of course, we're not getting the exercise that we that we should have, and I've gained a little weight. So I've went from 155 to right now. I think I weigh 210. It's a lot of weight gain, and it's all because of the lack of exercise. And so I joined the gym. It's right down the street. I walk there. It's a block away. And as I was working out the last couple days. The Lord brought into my mind that not only do we need a physical workout, but we need a spiritual workout. Spiritual workout. How do you spiritually work out? Okay, well, we're going to get into that today. That is the heart of our message. So if you have this marked, I'd like for you to go to Deuteronomy 30 and verse 6. The Lord your God will circumcise your hearts and the hearts of your descendants, so that you may love him with all your heart and with all your soul, and live. The Lord your God will put all these curses on your enemies who hate and persecute you. Okay. God wants you, in other words, what God is saying here is that God is going to take the scales off of your heart. He is going to He is going to allow you to know Him. And He is going to allow you to know Him in a very personal and a very emotional way. Now, why does God do these things? God doesn't want Him to seem distant a God that you can never ever get in touch with. You know that He's there. But how do I get in touch with the Creator? Because I'm just a man. A man who has original sin. A man that God is, is you feel like God maybe 
uh, has separated himself from you because of that original sin and because of the sins that we all commit from day to day. Okay, God here is making a way for you to know Him and to be forgiven. Now, of course, we know in the Old Testament that was very difficult, very difficult to be close to God. Of course, we know about sacrifices, and if you want to know all the laws, read Leviticus and Deuteronomy. And I mean, there's a bunch of them. And people woke up in the morning, and they, if they were followers of the Lord God, and they wanted to be pleasing to God, they thought about God from the time they woke up until the time they went to bed. They were constantly trying to follow the rules. And to do that meant that you had to have a spiritual workout every day to be with God. Let's examine Father Abraham. For, ex for example, Father Abraham, uh, he first came on the scene. He was, uh, of course, we know that he was thrown into fire. And uh, it was all because uh, him and his father got into it over his father worshiping false gods. And to make a long story short, his father turned him in to the king. And the punishment was that Abraham was supposed to be thrown into the fire. Now, they worshiped false idols back then. And even if you worship false idols, you still concentrated on God all day long, whatever God it was that you created. Now, Abraham knew better. He knew that there was only one God. And that was God, Jehovah, the creator of the universe. And so he followed the right God. And his faith was strong. He knew God. He talked with God every day. And God saw Abraham as an upright person. Because he spent time with God. God's not going to look at Abraham. You know, if, if Abraham would have just been a normal, everyday person, uh, God would not have looked upon him in the way that he did. I mean, you got to know that Abraham, Abraham spent time with God. And God made it a point to notice him. And when Abraham got thrown into the fire, Abraham knew that God could save him from it. And his mind was never changed about God. He was going to follow the Lord God, and he was not going to follow these false idols, no matter what. And when it came time for him to be tested, he passed the test, and God saved him from the fire. I believe he was in the fire for three days, walking around, down inside this furnace. His clothes weren't even scorched. When he came out of the fire, he was unscathed by it. Some people who threw him into the fire, the furnace was so hot, that just by throwing Abraham into this fire, they died from the heat that hit them. So you know this this fire was darn hot. But God saved him because he saw him as this upright person of God. Now you don't get to that place by not knowing God. Anybody else would have been thrown in that fire? God could have saved them. But they perished because they were not an upright person in God's eyes. You're saying to yourself, well, I'm an upright person. You know, I I go to church on Sundays and I spend time talking to God. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Now let's go and let's see what Jesus said about it. Let's go to Mark. Let's go over into Mark. We're going from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And we're going to compare notes here. And we're in Mark 12, and let's start with 30. Mark 12 and 30. Love the Lord your God 
with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second one is, love thy neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. There is no commandment greater than these. And that, ladies and gentlemen, are the words written in red. God, Jesus Christ, said it. The man that we worship on Sundays said it. So is it important? Does that mean does that mean we're supposed to, you know, do what we do during the week? And then on Sundays everything changes. We get dressed up, we go to church, and we worship God, and we sing hallelujah, and we speak in tongues, and we're slain in the spirit, and then we come home, and then we don't have to do it again until next Sunday. Is that what Jesus expects? No. If that's what you're doing right now, then we are going to have to set up something for you. We're going to have to set up what, what I would like to call a workout. A spiritual workout. In the same way as you would work out uh, down at a gym like I'm doing to get your body in physical shape, in good physical shape, you need to have your heart in good physical shape. And what I mean by your heart is your feelings about Jesus. Jesus has to be a life experience. And what do I mean by a life experience? Does that mean that you have to think of Jesus Christ like they did back in the Old Testament? Of course you do. If you're not, if you're not, then you have to ask yourself, do you really, really have a fire burning down inside of you for Jesus Christ? Now, it takes time. You're not going to have this burning desire for Jesus Christ right away. Everybody's at a different level of relationship with Jesus. After a person gets saved, they're usually very on fire for Jesus Christ. And I'm going to give you an example. There was a man. It was in one of the devotionals earlier this week or last week. And I remember him down at the convenience store. And uh, for argument's sake, let's say his name is Tim. And Tim came in, and I noticed he was telling everybody in the store that he got saved. Him and his family, all of them got saved. He felt led to give his life to Jesus Christ. He was so moved by Jesus Christ that day that he made a lifelong commitment to Jesus. So, he gets up off, off, off of his seat, he goes to the front, and he tells Jesus about his sins, he invites Jesus into his heart to be his Lord and his Savior, and voila, this man is saved. And God answers that prayer immediately. You can tell when a person gets saved, really saved, because they have the Spirit of Jesus in them at that particular time. They are blessed. God comes into that person and you can physically see it. Now, his wife and his children come up at the same time and they're all in tears. It's a very moving experience. I got the Holy Spirit all over me talking about it. Very moving experience to see a family give their life to Jesus Christ. And mean it. And mean it. There's the difference. And mean it. Now, Jesus talked about seeds. Uh, the seed is the Word. And that day, a seed was planted in these people. Now, was that seed, that word that they heard, were they, was that seed planted on good soil? In other words, 
Am I good soil for this seed? Am I the perfect condition for this seed to grow? Or did that word fall on rocky soil? Where the birds come and just eat up the seeds and then there's nothing left. Was the seed planted amongst thorns? The seed grows, it comes up, but it's smothered out. It's smothered out by the world. It's smothered out by the world. And it dies. Or was it planted in shallow ground? In other words, the plant comes up quickly, but the first storm that comes by, it washes the plant away because there's no root structure to hold it into place. There's no foundation for it. The roots have to go into the ground and they have to take hold so that that plant is strong. You know when a plant, when a weed out there is has been in the ground, is planted on good soil, because you grab a hold of it and I mean, them roots are in there. And it's hard to pull that thing out. And that's what, that's what Jesus is looking for. Good soul. So I noticed at the convenience store, he's all happy about Jesus. He's telling everybody, he's on fire for God. Father Abraham was on fire for God. Was on fire for God. But then the first storm came in this man's life. And he got a DUI. He got caught drinking and driving. And for some reason, he blamed that on God. In his mind, he thought that it was okay for him to be able to break man's laws and God was going to protect him. Abraham never did break any laws. He followed God's rules to the letter. And Jesus Christ doesn't want people drinking and driving. It's against God's law. It's against his moral standards. And if you're going to drink and drive, you take the chance of being caught by the highway patrol. And that's what happened to this man. And the very first storm that came by, he abandoned Christ just that quick stopped talking about Jesus and became a drunk. Of course, it, it, since he was the spiritual leader in the home, his children, they, they kept going to church for a little while. Notice the church bus would go by there and get him for maybe six months or so. But they had nobody at home to, to guide them and lead them and, and to encourage them to go to church. And so eventually the children fell away. And the wife fell away. And what happens when the devil gets into a hole and starts ripping things apart? That's what he does. He tears things apart. And this family fell apart. And they got a divorce. And the children moved out to another and I don't know where they live, but it's far away from here. And they lost their home. And she became, she moved to, uh, uh, down into another state. And as far as I can tell, far last time I heard, she was sleeping with another woman. So you know that Satan got in there, and I mean he ripped that place apart. And it's all because they didn't have real good oh what can I say they didn't have a real good spiritual workout plan that's what I'm going to call this you have to practice it's not going to come automatically you have to make a commitment and you have to put your nose in this book I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but you can't make a commitment to Jesus Christ and then and then say, okay, that's it. That's all I'm going to do. 
If you want your body to be healthy, you have to go down to the gym and you have to work out. You have to go outside, you have to work hard. If you don't, you're going to sit in your chair and you're going to gain weight like I did and you're going to start losing muscle mass like I did. You have to have a spiritual workout. And you have to have a plan that you are going to follow Jesus until the end. And I know it sounds difficult, but it's not that difficult. What do you think about during the day? You think about, you know, what you're going to have for dinner. You think about what you're going to do at work. And you're hoping that you don't have to work late. And you're, you know... The, the, the normal things that you have on your mind. But in the back of your mind, or even in the front of your mind, don't somewhere in all these thoughts that are firing in your head, don't you think about Jesus? Or do you think about Jesus? It's kind of like a prayer that lasts all day long. It's like a conversation in your mind that lasts all day long. It is speaking in tongues to God. When you think about Jesus, do you just give Him a praise? I've, I've done this with people. I've suggested to them that every time they think about Jesus, which is maybe about every ten minutes, and, and I got this from Brian in Ireland. He started this. He's got a timer and every 10 minutes it goes off and he gives Jesus Christ the praise. This is a spiritual workout. This is a great thing. This is a great idea. And eventually your life revolves around Jesus as the center. He's the important one. Remember he said here, words in red, words in red, by our Savior Jesus Christ said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. In other words, Jesus is saying, put me first. Oh man, the Holy Spirit, thank you God. Thank you Lord. Jesus is saying, put me first. And then I'll honor you. Yes, He will honor you. As in Psalms 91. Isn't that great? And I know this doesn't happen overnight. I know that I'm not going to lose all this weight in a week. <clears throat> I know that I'm not going to get my muscle strength back in my arms in a week. But I'm going to work at it. And I'm going to work at it every day. Of course, I'm not going to work out all day. But my spiritual workout goes on all day. And night. And that's what Jesus wants from you. Now what are the benefits from this? Are there benefits? Or is this something that you must do? Jesus says it's something that we must do. But, let me put it to you like this. Is there something that you like to do in your life that is really important to you? Let's just say, for instance, that you like football. And I know that when football season rolls around, there are games that, that 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 adults play it's like a it's like fantasy football or something I don't get into sports so uh, this may not be a real great uh, uh, example but I know that when football season rolls around adults go crazy over it they love this football football this football they can tell you who's on what team and what their stats are 
and how they're feeling and, and who's injured and who's not and who's about to be traded and they know everything about it. I, on the other hand, can tell you almost everything there is to know about Jesus. And do you know why that is? It's because He's important to me. Very, very important to me. And I pray that He's just as important to you. Because when you put God first, here's what happens. Let's let's just let's just do something. Let's let's take the time. Let's let's go to Psalms 91. And this may take me just a second. Click that off. Okay, Psalms 91. I pray that you're there. Let's just start, let's just read a few verses of this. This is what happens when you put God first. You can still like football, and you can still do all the things that you enjoy. There's people who love to go hunting. There's people who love to go canoeing during the summer. That people like to do all kinds of different things, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing. God wants you to enjoy yourself. But while you're doing that, you can, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. It says here, I will say of the Lord. It doesn't say, I will think upon the Lord. It says you're actually going to speak out loudly that you love God. And you are going to proclaim it in your home and outside of your home. So that people know where you stand with Jesus Christ. And God is going to look down on you because He hears what you're saying. And He is going to say, Hey, there's somebody who puts me first. Now what happens when God recognizes you? God says in His Word, and don't think because this is the Old Testament that this doesn't apply today, because it does. It says, it says, He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. This is God talking about what He's going to do for you. He's going to cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. How about that? Is God going to do all of these things for you just because you recognize Him as God? Yes. He wouldn't have wrote it down if it wasn't important to God. Is God someone that ever had to repent because He lied about something? No. When God tells you He's going to do something, He does it. Now I'm going to tell you what happens in my home. When we need something, God is there. When people come against us, God is there. People know that we are of God and that we preach the Word of God and they fear us 
because they know that God lives in us. Does that mean that I have a pain-free, uh, glorified life? No, it doesn't. But when I have problems, God saves us from it. God makes sure that we have food in our pantries. God makes sure we have gas in our truck. God makes sure we have a place to live and that we're comfortable. And when we need something, the Lord God softens somebody's heart and they make a donation to us. And that's how God works for us financially. And God will do the same thing for you because God is no respecter of persons. What He'll do for me, He'll do for you. But you got to put God first. And you can't play around with your relationship with God. I guarantee you that if you're married and you only spend a little bit of time every week with your spouse, you're going to hear about it. If you're not talking to your spouse, if you're not open with your spouse, if you are not friends with your spouse, then you're not a very good husband or wife. You've got to be open, you've got to be honest, and you've got to spend time in that relationship. And you've got to pay attention to that person. And you've got to show her or him that you love that person. If you want to keep him or her around, that is. Because I guarantee you, if you don't, they'll probably be gone. God the same way. If you're not going to give God a hundred percent, then you're going to get back what you put in it. I pray this is a wake-up call. I pray that you also know that through this relationship, when you get sick, or when you are need physically, that nobody can help you, you can call upon the Lord and He'll heal you because you call Him your God. And when you get a hold of me and you say, Kevin, I need this, 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 and this, I can guarantee you you're going to get it from the one that you've been serving all your life. The one that you're putting 100% into but if you're only giving him on if you're only giving him a seventh of your week, then don't expect God to come running to you when you need help. We're in the last days, folks. God expects more out of me. Than he does you. He expects a lot more out of me than he does you. And believe me, Janet and I have been put to the test. I said once before that if you're studying for a PhD, you have to work your butt off to get that PhD because they just don't hand them out. And when you receive that diploma, you know that you've earned it because you've put time and effort into it. God has made me His prophet and His healer. And that is, I'm not patting myself on the back, but God has tested me and I have proved faithful to God. And I love God with all my heart and all my soul. Really, I do. My hands itch. That's always a sign that God is about ready to bless me financially. <laughs> that's, that's what God does. And the Holy Spirit's all over me right now. Please, for your sake, I'm asking you, 
to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior or repent and come back to God and rededicate yourself to Him. But this time, mean it because we're in the last days. And I don't know. I don't know when we're going to hear the, the trumpet blow. I don't know. But I do know that I've listened to John Hagee and I've listened to T.D. Jakes, and I've listened to all the big big guys on TV, all the guys that have the big churches, and I'm telling you that they believe, man, thank you, Lord, that we could be raptured out of here any minute. All of the prophecies have been fulfilled. And I'm just telling you, th this may be my last message. Fix your relationship with God. All you've got to do is get down on your face and put your arms out and say, Father God, I am sorry for not putting you first. And I repent. And I'm asking you to receive me once again. And I will give you 100% I tell God that you failed Him. Tell God that you didn't do what He wanted you to do. And come back to God before it's too late. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to close with this. I found out from somebody I was watching on YouTube. He said that God had taken him... Uh, it was a vision, a day vision. But he said he was actually transformed into the future. And he was in the tribulation period. Now I'm just going to tell you what this man said. I'm not saying I agree with him. And I'm not saying that what he said was true. All I'm saying is this is this man's testimony. And he's very convincing. And the Holy Spirit was on me when he was talking. So I believe he's telling the truth. And he said the rapture isn't far away. He believes that we're going to be raptured out of here before the year is out, 2013. I don't know that to be true, so don't call me and say nobody knows the time or the day. I realize that. But you can look around you and you can see what's going on. You can see the wars and the rumors of wars. And the times, the people, the way people are acting towards God. The military won't allow anybody to even speak Jesus' name anymore. We're at the, we're at the time of the rapture. And you've got to get right with God. And tell your children, because this man said... Anybody who was eight years old or older would be judged. In other words, if you have an eight-year-old boy or girl, if they don't know Jesus and they haven't accepted Jesus as their Savior, they may get left behind. That's what this man said. I was very surprised. I would have never thought that. And I'm not saying it's true. But if you care about your children, share the gospel with them too. This is important. I believe, myself, I believe that it's children, you know, uh, and the Bible talks about uh, a woman reaching adulthood was 10 years old. But for some reason, something in my head says 12 years old. Nobody can prove that. Because it's never been, it's never been laid out for us. But what I'm trying to tell you is, be ready. Have your whole family ready if you love them. Let them watch this sermon and tell them what I'm telling you. Jesus loves you. Janet and I love you. It's easy to come back to God. God made it so easy that a child can understand it. It's not hard.
It's very simple to come back home. It's your choice. You can lead the horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. You've heard that say. Don't be a stubborn mule. Be easy to teach. Be easy to teach. Call me. My name is Kevin. 417-273-2036. And we're going to pray. Father Jesus, we thank you for coming into this holy place. And we thank you, Father God, that somebody's been moved by this. I pray to you, Father God, that everything we said touches everyone's ears. And that the Holy Spirit follows. It shows them the way, the truth, and the life, which is you, Father Jesus. Nobody will ever shut us up. We're here to stay. And we're here to lead people to you, Father, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Goodbye. I hope you've enjoyed this message. For more messages, you can go to YouTube channel 777 The Healer. Catch us at home anytime. 417-273-2036. Pray that you will enjoy all these messages. There are almost 70 messages on the internet. <coughs> Something for everybody. If you need any prayer, if you need any help of any kind, please don't be afraid to call us.